Hi everyone, today we are going to continue on with the uh, playlist, the series that I started last week called Books for the Quarantine, where I recommend you books to read during these times of confinement that we have to stay at home. Now, the ones that I'm trying to recommend are either in both languages, so I read it in Spanish, for example, but you can find them in English, or that they have been not recently published. So if you can find them, you will be able to find them in your digital library if they have them, or if not, I'm sure you can find a copy easier. And if you cannot read them by now, you can always wait until the quarantine is over, until this virus is gone, and actually go to your local store, bookstore, and buy it. Having said that, if you don't know me, my name is Clara, and I'm the owner of this channel where I talk about books in English and in Spanish. Today, we are going to be discussing two adult books that I love, both very important in my life, and I cannot wait to start. So let's summer up this and I start with the books. As I was saying, today we're going to discuss a couple of books that are actually in my favorite shelf. Having said that, I want to start this uh, recommendation video with a historical fiction adult book called El Tiempo Entre Costuras in Spanish and that's translated directly to English as the time in between and sometimes as the seamstress depending in if you are in I think America in, in the United States or in the UK but I'm going to go with the time in between because it's the kind of direct tr translation of the original title this is a historical uh, book set in the pre-Civil War, uh, Spanish Civil War, and also during the time of the uh, Second World War. This tells the story of Sira, who is a seamstress that lives in Madrid, the capital of Spain, and she has a quite ordinary life before the Spanish Civil War. Uh, she works in a kind of atelier, like sewing and stuff, and then uh, she uh, meets her fiancé, but when she is about to get married, she also meets a very handsome uh, typewriter seller who convinces her to run away, and this decision will change Sira's life, life forever because she runs away to Morocco and then when she tries to come back home she uh, is trapped there because they, uh, the civil war, the Spanish civil war has started and she cannot come back home to her mother or rescue her mother from the conflict. So she will be first um, uh, work in Morocco as a seamstress and she will find a way to uh, have her own atelier there but she will encounter other people, more influential people regarding the political decisions that will take her to or they will offer her a position as a spy uh, to end the, the Second World War or to help ending the Second World War the funny thing about this story is that I'm not an expert on the historical uh, fiction. I am uh, very scared of this genre. However, when I first read it, uh, when I was 18, 10 years from now, oh my god, um, 10 years ago really, um, I actually love it. I found it really compelling and I believe it's that's because several reasons, so I'm going to try to explain them to you as reason why you should give this a try. This is a, a story of a person and how she not only understands the world and her role in it in a very complicated, uh, complicated uh, scenario, really, 
she uh, will learn a lot about herself. And what I love the most about this story is that you grow up with the main character, the seamstress Sira, the Sira we find at the beginning of the, the story is not the same we find at the ending, when in theory I believe it's a spam of five years or, or so, so it's not a really long time has passed since this happened. Um, I also love how the the story is told at the beginning of the of the story you you see how the life in madrid was for the poor people and also when she flies to morocco and she discovers others other ways of living and she has the chance to be involved politically involved as a spy she is able to come back and see the changes that, that the war has uh, kind of affect, affected her city and I find that the way the author portrayed the war it was quite clinical and object, objective not objectify sorry objective way of telling it she was not taking sides she was just explaining what happened and and how it affected the poor people and i i love that i also love how precise the the vocabulary was in in the sense that uh, for example um for for Sia, clothing and and you know kind of patronage and how to create clothing was her way of living so she takes that vocabulary into the rest of her work she adapts her new position or her new situation into a scenery where she feels confident in this case we are talking about creating clothing and and dealing with customers and dealing with fabrics and all and i love that i love how she is able to turn the table and and make it an advantage of herself and i'm talking about the vocabulary because i feel this book was no info dumping in fact they are uh, the the events that are actually discussed are very briefly discussed and there are historical figures important historical figures mentioned here and some important historical figures that then don't normally appear in history books or not in the kind of general um, universe um, not university because probably university does treat this but um, maybe not in the kind of uh, high school uh, history lessons and i love that but she uh, um she adds those characters or those events not in an info dumpy way she sira encounters these people or these events while doing her work as a seamstress and she uh, has to navigate through the not so clear information at the beginning because things are happening right there so you don't have the complete picture after several years later so uh, she's as confused as everyone else and then when she gets to meet other people who actually inform her about the situation in in europe and all she will have to actually decide what she wants to do freely and she will encounter people through her uh, own experience that will be on her side or against her. But I love how the historical facts are not info dumping or just kind of a, a ram, random event happening there. It's quite integrated in the story. And I love how, despite being a historical, uh, historical kind of novel, is not completely that it's also a story of finding oneself of believing or or 
kind of defending what you believe and also looking looking it back now looking back at the book i believe it's a it's a story about the importance of unity and integration and respect for other people and other cultures and other thoughts and how authoritarianism is never a good choice of action and i love it i believe it's it's uh, very very character driven i love character character driven books i believe the style is quite quite precise is very sensorial as well so when you are with Sira in Morocco you can actually feel where you are you can actually smell what she smells or when she is dealing with fabric and creating new clothes and stuff like that you can actually imagine you are there helping Sira a little bit and also I love that when the story has to be action-packed it's actually very action-packed not, not in a gruesome way but in a kind of intriguing you you want it's a page turner in my opinion you want to know what happened next you cannot stop reading you are in the middle of a of a kind of you're being um you are being actually follow up and you you need to to see if Sita's going to be all right and also it's a story about uh, how you find yourself while you are away from your people which is very applicable to now in the sense that Sira spends quite a chunky part of, of the book alone away from those who actually knew her and she has to find ways of of cheering up herself she will find her own uh, family of of choice in a sense that she will find a uh, kind of variety cast of characters that will act as friends and family at the same time. I don't know, I love it. I feel like if you want an action-packed, very well uh, kind of um, ambience book, a very well written book with a very uh, precise ambience and scenery, but also um, kind of a story that goes beyond the historical facts, and also this spy kind of plot a story. I believe you will love this anyway. My second choice, however, it's a non-fiction book that is um, kind of presented as an epistolary non-fiction book. This is the story of, I think it's 84, of Char 84 Charing Cross Road. Um, in this story, Helen Hanf, the author, um, she collects several uh, letters that she uh, kind of received and and um, and compiled from several um, several um, how it's the word several um, booksellers in in one of her favorite places in the world in a um, bookshop that was established in that uh, address. Uh, this is the story of a friendship between the manager of said books, uh, bookstore, book, bookshop, and the rest of the people that actually were there. She found this uh, bookshop while looking for very specific books. This bookshop is in London and she was American, so she established through letters conversations with the manager of the shop and the other members of the bookshop in in a sense that while they send her books and parcels and stuff she uh, was able to create this bond specifically with the manager of, of the bookshop but also with the others that went through different years and different phases and i love how that friendship is developed through a small kind of letters where she discuss about literature and look for weird different books and how they go beyond that to the point where she uh, even sends letters to the wife of the manager of the bookshop because they became friends too and I love that. I know that this is a classic almost. I know that after the book had 
and this brilliant success, it was transformed into a play and also into a film around the 60s or late 50s, I'm not sure. But I found it a few years ago and I read it in one sitting, it's very thin, but I, I fell in love with it. I fell in love with it because it's the perfect book for those who, like me, love literature and love finding people who understand you and understand how you feel about books, how you kind of empathize more with books than with other objects of your daily life. And I love how important the friendship around books can, can be. And the fact that it was actually a real life uh, situation that it was not it was not invented it was real letters with with real people behind them it's quite cozy and special i don't know this might be a tricky book because i understand that non-fiction can be a little bit over uh, overwhelming for some people but i found it in a period of my life where i was surrounded by writers and people who love to read as much as I did so I believe that also that also helped me to have such esteem for for this this book I highly recommend it and as it's very thin I believe you can actually give it in one read this is it this is all I wanted to chat with you today so I hope you actually uh, are well in good health and your quarantine situation is not giving you a lot of trouble. If you have recommendations about historical film, books that you may love and I may be interested in, let me know in the comment section down below. And if you know books about other books or about people who love books, I would love to know your recommendations too. See you next week, okay? Bye!